Um, sour cream and onion. Yeah, road trips rock. Blazing a new path, the wind in your hair, daily grind in the rear view. Nice, fan mail. Oh. Dear Tim and Moby, dividing decimals is confusing. Am I going to have to do this in real life? Thanks, Tamia. <laughs> Dividing decimals can actually come in handy, Tamiya. Especially when you're divvying up stuff or working with money. Like figuring out how much we each owe for this, uh, lunch. Let's see, the total cost is $29.35. And there are one, two, three, four, five of us. We can write out the numbers like a regular division problem. There's one decimal point in the dividend, the number we're dividing. For now, we can just forget about it and solve the long division like normal. Okay, 5 goes into 29 five times with 4 left over. 43 divided by 5. And 5 into 35. Don't worry, there's no way we each owe $587. Remember, we're splitting 29.35 five ways. So the quotient has to be way smaller than 29. We have to put our decimal back in the dividend. Then slide a decimal up into that same spot in our quotient. It's a simple trick, but it works. <laughs> well, let's make an estimate just to be sure. First, we'll round that dividend to the nearest whole number, 29. About how many times does 5 go into 29? Or, put another way, 5 times what equals 29? Well, we all know that 5 times 6 is 30. And 5 times 5 equals 25. So the answer to our division problem should be between 5 and 6, but closer to 6. Yep, it's confirmed. Pony up, guys. 587 each. Um, I think this is more than enough to keep us going. Oh, right. That kind of fuel. A hybrid. This baby is not. We've saved up $52.03, and gas will run us $2.42 a gallon. Now our divisor has a decimal, too. That means one extra step in our problem solving. We have to move the decimal over until it's a whole number. One, two. Which means we have to do the same thing to the dividend. Slide it over two places, then back to some long div- It does seem like we changed the equation. But let's look at what really happened. Every decimal jump to the right is really multiplying the number by 10. So that's 10 times 10 on the dividend, and 10 times 10 on the divisor. In other words, we multiplied our problem by 100 over 100. Right, otherwise known as 1. And, as we know, multiplying by 1 doesn't change a number's value. So our quotient will be the same. Now all we have to do is some regular long division. Let's see, 242 into 520. I know 250 times 2 is 500, so let's try 2. 4, 8, 4. Dun, 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 dun. 6, 3, 36 left over. So now we have 242 into 363. We already know that 242 times 2 is 484. So it must go into 363 once. Yep, we still have a remainder, whatever 363 minus 242 is. So, 1, 2, 121. But since this is a decimal problem, we don't just leave it at that. We need to add a decimal and a trailing zero. 
and we'll put the decimal in the same spot in our quotient. So now it's 242 into 1,210. I know that 250 goes into 1,000 four times. And this is 210 more than that. Let's try a 5. Times 2 is 10. 1, 2... 1,210. So there you have it. We've got enough cash for 21.5 gallons. Now, enough of this math. Let's hit the road. Get ready to... Rock. Well, another fine mess you've gotten us into.